Well, Richard uh, was born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1925. Uh, his father came from Ireland and his mother's parents came from Denmark, so he was 50-50. Uh, and um, he, uh, at the age of 17, he convinced his father to allow him to join the Navy and serve uh, during World War II on a naval tanker in uh, convoy duty in the North Atlantic and then to the Mediterranean and from there to uh, the Pacific where he uh, served at Iwo Jima and came under kamikaze attack in Okinawa. Uh, after the war, uh, Richard worked uh, a whole number of jobs. He moved around a lot, uh, like people do today, only that was in an era when folks just didn't do that. Well, he traveled uh, with me uh, for mo most of our uh, years. We, we moved around from place to place, as I said, the cities that I'd worked in, and Richard uh, uh, sold uh, foreign newspapers and publications in San Francisco, and uh, then Ridgewood, uh, he uh, worked selling uh, antiques and collectibles, and uh, he spent his life doing that. And he in initiated me and in my interest in art and antiques. I was born in Youngstown, Ohio, and uh, worked as a messenger part-time while I was in high school. And when I was graduated uh, in 1956, I was taken into the office as a telephone operator and an automatic operator. And then my first vacation was in September 1956 uh, when I met Richard. Well, I, I worked for uh, Western Union for about 38 years, from 56 until 88, and uh, went on to do uh, work for another communications company uh, until uh, 2001, when I retired and became a consultant, and moved, thankfully, to Milwaukee. How did you guys meet? Can you tell us about that? Well, I had just come out of a theater in uh, Euclid Avenue in Cleveland, and he was walking up the street, and I was walking down the street, and our eyes met, and uh, we were attracted. But it wasn't then that we met. I went to the uh, Greyhound bus station that evening and went to the post office uh, to have coffee. And uh, he and his friend that had been with him were sitting in a in a uh, uh, booth and to make to cut the ice his friend said in a loud voice we'll never get served here let's go to the counter so he made sure that Richard sat next to me and that uh, broke the ice for us When I met him, he was the manager of a toy warehouse for Higby Department Store in Cleveland. And it was the height of their busy season. Uh, so uh, we spent our honeymoon in a toy warehouse uh, while he was working out schedules, work schedules for people for the next week and taught me how to shoot price tags on the Madame Alexander dolls. It was a very romantic time. <laughs> Well, when we met at first, uh, Richard dressed quite differently. He was wearing Levi's and uh, a black leather jacket and motorcycle boots, and he was a knockout, believe me. Uh, then in the late 60s, he uh, got interested in uh, knickers, which had just come into vogue in a very small way in San Francisco. and. Uh, from then on, he wore uh, knickers or breeches, they might call them, and uh, knee socks, argyle usually, and uh, braces. And uh, he surely did become known for that. It was quite a trans transition, but he always kept his indomitable spirit. And as to how people reacted, he loved it when it was favorable, and he also liked it when it wasn't, as long as there was some reaction he was happy. 
we <laughs> went to a wedding one time of uh, a young lady that he worked with, and uh, uh, he, he wore a kilt at that wedding. And um, one of those kilts Gus is going to wear at the memorial tribute. And the leader hosen he wore in the summertime. And uh, one of the pictures that is going to be shown was, was of him at a, at a sale day. And I remember one of our friends, a lady antique dealer, spotted us in the uh, park one day and yelled out to him from her car, Hey, cutesy kneesies. Well, we were very much together all the time. In our, really, it was almost in our own world. And that was very good for us. We, we, we got v so close. But it, I must say that it did the, abil the inability to come out to our co-workers, to our family, uh, built walls. And uh, my mother and father died. His father died without our ever having broached the subject. And as a matter of fact, I told my sister the night that we testified at the joint hearing in Madison uh, against this despicable amendment. And uh, I said, Rainey, I'm going to tell you something we've never discussed before. But she just said, well, how did they receive you when you were making these talks? And, and at first I thought she didn't understand what I was saying, but she did. And she made sure her son got the word around to the entire family. We'd been out of the out of the silent generation, and it was have been impossible for me to manage folks in the '50s, '60s, '70s, even the '80s and '90s uh, if I had been out. And but even though that's true, uh, no matter how deep in the closet you are, the door is transparent to people that have known you for a while if they have their wits about them. But uh, uh, we. Uh, decided really after I had seen Tony Kirshner when he had a fundraiser here and met P uh, Patrick Flaherty and when he invited us to speak at Pride Fest we contemplated on navels for all about five minutes and I called him back to say yes we would because we felt that it was worth it it was if to us and to this entire community that to uh, claim our rights as American citizens. I would do a draft and then we would get into a, 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 a duking it out situation where he'd say, well, put this in and take that out. And always he strengthened the, the final speech. And the last one that we did together, we did over his hospital bed. But when I was going down to deliver the speech, he said, remember, Ray, I'm always, I'm standing beside you. And I carry that with me now. Richard and I had 50 glorious years of life together, and I wouldn't change a moment of them. There were ups and downs. We surely had difficulties like everyone else does to work out, but we always, especially he always, placed the other ahead on every uh, thing that they did. And uh, it, it strengthened us like Toledo Steel. And every one of those moments I wouldn't give up, but the last year was the most glorious of them all because of our involvement in this activity to free the LGBT community and earn for ourselves the full rights of American citizenship. And Richard was so delighted. Every time we would speak, he would have me run multiple copies and get them to everybody under the sun. Every nurse that came into the room, every doctor, every administrator, every floor sweeper had to have a copy of the speech. Every time there was something new on the, uh, that we were involved in, he was so excited and happy, even in the hospital room.